Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today I'll be once again joined by CGB as we continue our quest to explore more jank decks and today's theme is underappreciated tribal decks. So I'll be playing four different tribal decks from my perspective and then of course you can check out CGB's video as well that I'll link in the description to see all the decks that he brought to the table. First up from my side will be Centaur Tribal, a pretty straightforward green-white beatdown deck featuring some all-stars like Conclave Cavalier and the Ferris Ban Brawler as a nice removal spell built into a creature. We've got some other staples like Centaur Courser, Centaur Peacemaker also makes an appearance, can gain us a bit of life back, and the Centaur Nurture also has a bit of life gain built in and can help us ramp. And then of course Icon of Ancestry, the main payoff that we'll see in all of my builds of these tribal decks, can give our creatures plus one plus one and help us look for additional creatures of the chosen type. And then we've got some more removal here too with Pacifism, Bond of Flourishing gives us some selection and Wolf Willow Haven gives us some additional ramp and then a pretty straightforward mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. Alright, um, <laughs> got a nice opening hand here, that old mulligan. <laughs> You're too kind to me. Uh, I'm gonna hang on to this. I'll keep. Let's not be too greedy. Alright, sure. Tell me something. Do you have any flesh-eating insects in your country? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but uh, I'm no expert on the matter. Well, I have some bad news for you, because you're about to receive a flesh-eating insect invasion. So we're up against insects. Can you guess what tribe I am on? Sorcery Tribal. It's going to be clear in just a second here. I have this funny feeling it's not warriors. Indeed. All right. Hmm. Fun turn here. I think we'll just dial up the pressure that only a three mana two two can provide. You know, Death Touch is actually pretty good against my deck. That's a, that's an annoying one. A limited all-star Conclave Cavalier. <laughs> New player experience all-star as well. My free-to-play decks often revolved around drawing this card, but it is a big boy, and I don't actually want to trade my Death Toucher with it too much. I don't mind. Of course you don't. All right, time to fill this graveyard. What do we have here? Well, I guess I'll just keep doing this for the rest of the game. <laughs> no, I probably can't beat it. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do about this? This is insane. Okay. Uh, I guess. I definitely can't take four for the rest of the game. Now, the sad thing is my elf knights aren't uh, centaurs. You're right. That card should be banned. It's a bit of a nombo. You are way off theme. This is this is unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, it's the two elf knights that are kind of hiding inside the uh, center body. One's the tail end and one's the front end. I know that's supposed to be flavor, but I thought a centaur actually was a centaur. Maybe the Simic were involved. All right, you ready for this? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm going to exile that Conclave Cavalier, but unfortunately it's the one that's in the graveyard. <laughs> My deck is looking more like Conclave Cavalier Tribal instead of uh, Centaur Tribal. Legit. But I'm just going to keep collecting eyes. Stay focused. All right, it's pretty good. Gain five. Trying to stay alive. I guess it's time for this boy. 
Rude. You didn't name Elf. Or Knight. You could have named Knight. That would have been better on this board, but I've got some center warriors coming up. Oh. Oh. That left a mark. I wonder if there's an Izoni in my future. There better be. Well, that wasn't what I hoped to mill. Well, speak of the devil. My one true hope, my Obi-Wan Kenobi. I guess we'll start here. Swing and a miss. Let's see. There is Band Brawler. Six mana, four, four. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one creature. I wonder what you have that would give a Centaur Trample. I feel like this is where uh, your limited expertise trumps my lack of limited expertise. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a ton of room for non-Centaur cards. It's kind of like we're playing Guilds of Ravnica Limited here. Golgari versus Selesnya. I've never drafted a deck close to this proficient at casting a Zoni, but it does sound fun. Oh, but we get the good mana bases, right? Limited with good mana. I like that. Yeah. Well, a Zoni, looks like you're going to go to the graveyard. You can take this Pacifies Forger with you. I'll accept the trade. Yeah, because you get endless elf knights forever and ever. We need another Izuni. Well, that's the thing about... That's the thing about bugs. They just keep on coming. Alright, nice. That's a lot of bugs right there. Oh yeah, the bug population is growing. I guess this is fine. Did you see this uh, sick crawl swarm value? Oh yeah. Maybe I'll actually get to use it. In fact, that's probably my win con. The eye collector was taking too long. <laughs> All right, sorry, Zoni, you gotta go. Not again. We were having such a good time. That's so many big creatures. Oh my gosh. It's like, what good does chump blocking even do? How to use these little bug resources. Actually, I think I've got to let that go. I think I've got to let those be. I think I have to try to outsize those. I don't know if I'm going to outsize the five fives anytime soon, but I think I've got to try to outsize the two twos. All right. That's a start. It's it's a it's a thing that I do. I don't know if it's a good thing. Very powerful thing I can't do anything with right there. But let's get a three toughness creature out here and see how your elf knights like it. Ooh, I guess I'm down. Let's maybe start here. I swear I put centaurs in this deck. 
<laughs> oh no. No. My plans. You're ruining my plans. <laughs> All right. Well, new strategy. Live long enough to draw and raise forerunners. So if I draw that, I can at least get rid of one of these. Save these. Death Touch gets rid of that one. Oh my goodness. Maybe I'm better off. Is that your only out, you think, at this rid point? Of the other five, five? I think so. Another Azoni buys me more time. Okay, so yeah. Otherwise, you can just maybe take it and hope for the best. <laughs> that sounds like a that sounds like a great recommendation from the enemy. <laughs> Would you like to just not block and hope for the best? That's... This leaves me enough chumpers to get through one more turn. It looks like that's what I'll need. I am slowly running out of centaurs too here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're wearing it down. We're trying. Yeah, another Izoni here would be pretty good. All right. Got to make sure I use a centaur icon and not a knight one. That would be something. But you just hit another cavalier, so it's fine. This one's pretty good. <laughs> I'm getting slapped around by that card. The brawler. Yep, here they come. I mean, it's kind of its job, right? Let's see, gang up on that. Let's see, if I draw the four runners, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. It's not going to be lethal. You have too much toughness. So now I'm just playing for another Izoni, I guess. Izoni into Forerunner? I guess that, that would pretty much do it. So if I'm doing that, the question is, like, do I chump or do I try to trade off one of these three threes? You think you can Buy use Castle too? Let's see, Castle, like land plus if you draw land, you can maybe still Castle for Izoni. Could also hit the... Um, the reanimation spell off the castle. Yeah, I guess this is what we're doing. He's only six mana, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost got there. A wrong order. Take the pain bacon. Just, just take it. Uh, fine. <laughs> I bet the next card is the uh bet the next card is his Oni. Alright, the brawler has gotta prove a point here. Face the pain bacon. Alright, good game, good game. Your centaurs have proven dominance over my insects. Or should I say Conclave Cavalier has proven dominance over <laughs> my entire deck. Well, the insects were a lot more resilient than I thought at first, so yeah, not a bad game. Yeah, that was fun. And next up we have a Crab Tribal, which includes some cards that you might not have seen on Arena before, but we're pretty happy playing a 1-mana 4 in this deck, since we're also playing Hotly, the Sun's Heart, that makes our creatures deal damage equal to their toughness rather than their power, which of course plays quite nicely in the Crab Tribe, and Hotly can also gain a bit of life back equal to the highest toughness among creatures we control. And then we've got some all-stars like Growth Chamber Guardian, that can find more copies of itself, and then uh, Fortress Crab can deal 6 damage with Watley in play, who can, of course, forget about Wishcoin Crab. And then Sharto Crab can also act as removal. And then our Curve Topper is Scuttle Gator, which can turn into a 9-9 creature that uh, can then attack as though it didn't have Defender. 
And then once again the full playset of Icon of Ancestry, as well as a Bond of Flourishing to give us a 2 mana play, since there's not too many 2 mana cramps in standard. And then in the mana base also the full playset of Castle Garenbrick, which can make it easier to cast a Skull Gator, or to activate the various adapt abilities on our adapt creatures. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. Wow, this hand is bad. <laughs> 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 I mean, something would eventually get assassinated, but I don't... Oh, man. All right, I got a mulligan. Ugh, this is better. I'll keep it. But I'm not sure what to pitch. The middle one. The middle? Yep. Really? The Always the middle? I feel like you're setting me up. Okay. I'm just going to draw a land. I'll be fine. Always just throw away a land and get mana screwed. That's the strategy. I love to bottom that one. One, one death touch. Your go. Uh oh. That's not good. I hope you don't have allegiance and. Not assassin themed enough. Bond of Flourishing is such an underrated card, in my opinion. It's an excellent card. I keep putting it in my decks. You know, if you really needed a land, you could have told me. Alright, I'll take it. <laughs> Darkblade Agent, so we got a 2-3, but if we Surveil, it becomes an Ophidian. It deals damage, I draw cards. It's pretty good. But is it better than a Charteau Crab? Trick question, is anything better than a Charteau Crab? Ooh. Yep. Alright. It's pretty good. Vraska is basically my tribal overlord. Hmm. I just drew mine. I guess I gotta do this now. Or I could try and find a land first. Yeah, I'll draw a land, right? Yeah, totally. That did not pan out. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Bond of Flourishing great? <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. It actually is. So the Castle Garenbrig couldn't do it for you. It must be an ability that involves blue. You must be trying to shark to crab and play what? Another Grill Chamber Guardian? Let's just do this for now. Icon. Icon naming crab. Things I never thought I'd see. Ooh. Uh-oh, I have to be rude. You ready? I'm ready. Ooh. Charteau Crab was too famous for his own good. He sure was. And there is a price to fame. I'm actually going to keep both of those. We're turning into Assassin Tempo. I don't know if I can beat that, but we'll try. I think it is time. Skulligator? What the? 7-7 seven, seven, Defender, Adapt 3 for 8. Has plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. It can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Wow, so you get an 8-8 eight, eight that can attack for a mere 14 mana? Yeah. Oh, it's bigger than that. It's a 10-10, right? Adapt 3. Okay. Oh, and Icon, of course. Unfortunately, like I said, the Assassin Tempo is, is going to be very cruel to the Skulligator. Very, very cruel. A 
my pirate is gonna hold the fort. So I could make a trade. <laughs> With the 1-1 one, one token. But I don't wanna. <laughs> Sometimes we go down with our pets. Alright, Lazav, your days are numbered. <laughs> he is very multifarious. Yeah, let's do this. Uh oh. Crab isn't so weak now, is it? Oh my goodness, look at that life boost. 6-6 six, six for a mere one mana. It's pretty good. I guess I would be taking Exaxes. So I guess we gotta stay back. Yeah. Well, I can't I can't watch this crab die defending you, so I'm just going to have it unexplainedly disappear, as tr assassins often make things unexplainably disappear. And we'll flex on the Hawatli with the Vraska's passive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to kill Planeswalkers. And yeah. Well, according to the game, my Hawatli's still in play, so... <sighs> it's so unfair. <laughs> I wanted the total victory. And next up we have Golem Tribal, but to see Golem Tribal in action you'll have to check out CGB's video that I'll link in the video description, where we battled Golem Tribal vs Seder Tribal. But for now I'll give you a quick sneak peek of what this deck is all about. Of course a major payoff being Master Splicer, giving Golems we control plus one plus one, as well as making a 3-3 Golem token. We've got a bunch of artifacts, which makes the renowned Weaponsmith a nice ramp card to help us get this meter golem in play a couple turns sooner. Cavalier of Dawn can also make a golem when it enters the battlefield, so we can sometimes destroy our own permanence to get that golem token going. And then a pattern matcher is a nice one, as it can help us find more copies of our good cards. And then, of course, once again, Icon of Ancestry to tie the deck together, as well as some uh, jankier golems like Ginger Brute, Prismite, and Aaron Bully. So if you want to see this in action, make sure to check out CGB's perspective. And then for our final tribal deck of today, we have Minotaur Tribal. We went with a Junt version, so we can include Warden of the Chained. And then in blank, we have a Slaughter Priest of Mogus, giving us an actual 2-drop in the deck, as well as the one of Rage Scar Berserker. The spicy top end here, two copies of Death Below Warcry, which lets us search our library for up to four Minotaur creature cards with different names, put them on the battlefield, and then shuffle our library. So that can potentially find all these different one-offs and help us close out the game. And then uh, looking at the rest of the deck, we've got the full playset of Omen of the Forge as a nice cheap removal spell that we can also sacrifice to the Slaughter Priest. So it has a good synergy there. We've got the Buccaneer, as well as once again Icon of Ancestry. We've got the Nahab Dreadhorde Champion, which can also help us discard bad cards to filter our draw steps. And then uh, Scofall's Mace Warden, Plus, we also included two copies of Labyrinth of Scofalls, so we can potentially set up that combo, which is pretty neat. And yeah, pretty straightforward mana base, including plenty of dual lands and fetch lands to make sure we can cast our spells and still include a nice uh, Labyrinth. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. I can work with this. This looks like a pretty good draft deck. I don't know what this looks like. I even have the ultimate combo. Okay, you heard it here. Legend has the ultimate combo. Saddle in. This card has served me well lately. Yeah. Had a pretty epic top deck of one in a certain game recently. Moving in. You've activated my trap card. No! So, so brutal. All right. All right, Kiora, take care of me.
Jund. What does this even do? Four mana, three, four. Plus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control named Labyrinth of Scophos, you may have this fight a creature. You better have included that in the deck. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen that actually happen. Maybe it's the ultimate combo I was referring to. Oh no! Brutal. All right. My play is a little less... What's a good word? Strong? <laughs> dun dun dun. Dear lord. I'm gonna have to read this like seven times. <laughs> Me too. So if I attack or block, this is only my creatures? No, it's any creature. Yep. You can target your own creature. <laughs> you can attack. Is that right? Whenever another creature becomes the target of ability of a land you control, another one. Yep. So not this creature. So you can't attack with the Maze Warden uh -huh. and target it with the Labyrinth. You just need something else. The Maze Warden doesn't discriminate between my creatures and your creatures. <laughs> Neither does the Labyrinth, apparently. I think we'll start here. Barging indeed. Okay, Aeromoculus, you must go to war. At least now a Bioessence Cider is not as scary. Hmm. <laughs> I had seen this going differently. We could attack with the Biomancer and untap it. Makes Cura even more vulnerable. Maybe an Omen of the Forge would even kill it. At this point, it feels like the Biomancer has to even chump this thing. Hmm. I guess we'll start there. I'm trying to think of all the absolute silly things that could somehow give a minotaur trample. And it my brain doesn't work this way. It's not made for this life. <laughs> Target creature gets plus one plus oh and indestructible. Sure. So five mana five four. Yeah. Fallen. Hmm. Not even sure what to power up here. I mean, how do you even beat the ultimate combo? I don't think I do, <laughs> to be real with you. I guess the party has to start somewhere. First blood. Ooh, that's a nice one. It's an interesting experience being on the other end of your sounds of excitement that I'm so used <laughs> to hearing on the internet and uh, feeling the same about. Now I'm like, oh no, that's got to be bad. So you can use the labyrinth, withdraw one of these from combat and fight something else anyway. Yeah, how do I beat ultimate combo, as you put it? I don't think I can. If I line up a double block, it's just a blowout, and I'm throwing away a creature for nothing. If I don't block something, things go very, very wrong. So be it. Then at least you'd have to use the labyrinth to withdraw your own creature from combat to do it. What the heck is this? <laughs> We've got a reader. <laughs> I, I have to read all these cards. I don't play the limiteds. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me. That's why Jank Week is so crazy. Sacrifice a non-land permanent. Yeah, do that. 
yeah, I like this. <laughs> Can't wait to see what that ability does. In the meantime, I did draw my Overlord. All right. It's something. First time seeing that animation. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe they even put one in. So I could boost up the Biomancer and loot. I don't know if it gets better than the card I already have. I think it's about time we just got Aerial Aggressive here. Are you ready for an awkward race? I'm always ready. I guess I'd rather be chump blocking with this. If I, un like a 3-3 three, three doesn't block anything here well. So I guess you, if you, if we must block. I have a feeling something bad is going to happen to me though. The labyrinth does make things pretty complicated. Uh, yeah, if you keep up mana and try to turn one of my flyers around, you get the fight. This is weird. Let's uh, get in there. LVD only knows one life, and it's the attacking life. Oh, man. What to do? There's so many ways this could go with the labyrinth and the maze, the maze thing, and I still don't even feel like I fully understand the depths of pain I'm about to receive. And just chump up and proliferate. You don't really have a good reason to use the Labyrinth on any of this unless you want to save this Shaman. Then you activate this, you fight over here. This is still alive, but then I have a Flyer to attack with. And if you use the Labyrinth, then I can attack you. So I don't think you want that. All right, let's see what you do. All right, so the finding indeed doesn't accomplish a whole lot here. Let's see, I can pump this four times up to eight, which is not quite enough, but it's almost enough. Can I die next turn? It's not impossible. So I guess we'll play it a little safe and then just um, do two pumps. Mm hmm. Oh, my. Okay. I was, I was one down short. I was thinking about one of those, but two of them. Hello. All right. We've got a game. I think so. You still have that annoying card. I still suspect this turn will go poorly for me. I think I just take my draw step. Yeah, I don't think I've got good attacks anymore. Slaughter Priest holds up the Labyrinth. Oh boy. Hi ya. I guess this is okay. Hmm, is there any instant speed pump spell I should be aware of? Could technically take five. Nah, this seems fine. Hmm. 
I will decline the fight. No, you were supposed to fight. <laughs> it would have been so nice. All right, upkeep. Oh, we got him digging. Hmm, it's not bad, I guess. But I don't even need it, really. I'll keep it anyway. All right, no flash creatures, please. Uh-oh. I guess you can pump that. It'd be very bad. Let's see, this pumps too. Very bad. All right. Let's see, one, two, three, sacrifice this. One, two, all right. Well, if you've got a, a trick up your sleeve, I could beat that. But I think I gotta go for it. Alternative would be just pumping the Maze Warden, trading, but if you've got something, I'm probably dead anyway. A W Frog. Oh no! Incongruity. Not like this. Who's the mutant now? I guess I'm not technically dead yet. Actually, no, you are not. <laughs> and you do still have that pesky labyrinth. So I needed a draw. How about haste? I guess Glinthorn Minotaur kills me. Does it? One, two, three, one, two, three, four. No, it would leave me at one. And I might need this Kiora. The value could still really matter. All right. All right. I guess we'll uh, just have to sit on this labyrinth for a while. That's probably decent. That's all right. It's an engine. There's this one card in my deck that I would not mind drawing at this point. Does it start with death? It does. <laughs> it does. It would be pretty mana efficient right now. Well, it's a lethal threat. So, could attack with that, make you use your mana, and then you don't get to scry on this turn. It does leave my Hydra tapped. I think that's okay. So I think we make you use the mana. Take the scries away from the eight mana sorcery. Now what? Probably just go to take my draw. If I scry, then what am I drawing towards? Don't think I have a single card that does it. All right, come on, one time. One time, come on. Not quite. I think we're dead. Oh man, how how deep is this war cry? I want to know. If it's on top, will you? T well, I guess I'll know. You'll scry it to the top. It's not on the top. It's not on the top. Well, that's that's another draw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
This was a game. This was a very fun game. Yeah, lots of back and forth. Whew. Man. Proper, proper magic. I had a chance to kill that Kiora at the uh, middle part of the game there with the uh, Omen. But um, yeah, one point away from lethal too. That one turn with the uh, Mace Warden attack. But then the Proliferate kind of got out of hand a bit. Yeah, very awesome game. Glad uh, we get to experience it. Certainly not least. Going into that game, you were like last, but certainly not least. That was probably the best one. Thank you so much for the games. Yes, likewise. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Make sure to check out CGB's perspective. I'll link the video in the description as well. But for now, want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.